Hi, I'm Omar Bedi, and welcome to my video on Institute Advice. One of the most intimidating things about the work that we do is it's like climbing a mountain. When we climb a mountain, we know it's pretty tough, and we know that we're going to fall and bruise ourselves along the way. This video is to help you when you're climbing your mountain of teaching, and knowing that even when you're at the top, and it's pretty cold at the top, that you won't get burned out. So a few things about me. My name's Amr Vedi, like I said, and I'm a Charlotte 2011 core member. Originally, I studied history and economics at the University of Florida, but I was placed in secondary math. This is probably in a similar position to most of you who studied soft sciences and then just got placed into a high need STEM area. Uh, during institute, I taught seventh grade math in the Mississippi Delta. My Mississippi Delta experience was critical. Not only was I placed in the highest poverty region in the United States, but I also was in a classroom where my students did not have a teacher for the two years prior to teaching. Think about that. The two years prior to me teaching, they did not receive one steady teacher. They had subs throughout the period. So for me, coming in, I had a pretty rough experience in institute, and it kind of shaped the way that I approached teaching in the fall at my placement school. While I was at my placement school, I taught AP Statistics, Advanced Functions and Modeling, Algebra 1 for Repeaters, and Algebra 2. That's kind of unusual, but don't be surprised if you get this in very high need schools. They need teachers, and once they get them, they're going to put you guys in preps that you may not be comfortable with. For me, that was AP Statistics. This is also where I met Natalie, and she asked me if I could make this video because of how I'm dealing with both the freshmen who are repeaters and the seniors. I've been able to see these kids and their growth from freshman year to senior year with transformational teachers. And I really wanted to show you that there is hope for that to happen. Uh, a first few things that I want to help you guys out with. Anxiety. You guys are going to have a lot of anxiety during your institute experience. And this may be normal for some of you, and for others, it'll be the first time. It's that pit in your stomach before you're about to teach a lesson. It's caused by either performing in front of them or realizing that you're just not super comfortable with the content that you're teaching. you got to learn to fight this anxiety. Now, anxiety over time as a teacher, you're going to get over it. But during Institute, you're only given a few weeks to really get over it. So you need to find out what works for you. Some of the things could be pretty ridiculous. Some of the things could be pretty simple, like, you know, taking a deep breath. For me, I found that listening to um, pretty soothing music and just driving to work in my car with uh, the music that I liked really helped. Um, that was my outlet. Others may have working out or a sport. Whatever it is, make sure you find it and use that thing to decrease that anxiety and ultimately the stress level that you're going to gain in these next few weeks and during your life at, at uh, your placement region. Uh, another thing I really want to hit on is weaknesses. Um, you need to be able to identify your weaknesses and overcompensate for them. Uh, now notice I'm not talking about strengths here because strengths I feel you can leverage. You want to leverage your strengths within your classroom and outside of your classroom. But weaknesses is something that you need to be able to pinpoint them and say, all right, how do I address this? Uh, for an example, I was very, very bad at organization. So what I decided to do was overcompensate for my organizational skills by trying to organize as much as possible. So I created an organizational system for virtually everything in my classroom. You wanted handbacks, here are where all the handbacks goes in the classroom. You want to know what the homework procedure is, here's the homework procedure. I literally made a procedure for every single thing in my classroom because that was my weakness. Now my strengths I was able to wing. When I was lecturing for content knowledge, that was great for me. When I was walking around the classroom and behavior managing, that was a strength for me. Now if it wasn't a strength for me, I'd do something like behavior narration because I want to give those clear expectations to my students. And by studying your weaknesses and learning how to overcompensate for them, you'll become that stronger leader in your classroom. The third thing is efficiency. Now, many of you will be tempted 
to go in and make a very set schedule of how you're going to work. And for some of you, this will work. For some of you, it won't. Uh, for me, I try to create an efficient model of how I was getting teaching, how I was getting my prep done, because you will have a lot of prep to do. Uh, the thing is, is I don't want to scare you guys away from feeling like you have to do this. Efficiencies come with trade-offs with creativity. Teaching is, in my opinion, more of an art than a science. You need to be able to be willing to give yourself time, maybe on the bus or while you're working out, to really think about your lesson. Think about the parts that you're going to enjoy and think about how you're going to teach them. I can tell you for sure that for me, some of the best lessons came while I was sitting on my couch eating dinner. And for some people, they like to not think about work then, but for teaching, it's really something that you need to let your creativity flow. And sometimes you create the best lessons that way. So when thinking about teaching, I've thought of three things, and I hope that these will carry out in your institute experience and in your classroom. Teach for America really chose you because you have three things that they really liked. You had strong capabilities, you were educatable, and you had a commitment. All three of these things are going to play a major role within your classroom and within your school. The first is capabilities. Now, you need to leverage that analytical excellence, those interpersonal skills with your students, and those leadership skills to become a good teacher in your classroom. You need to make sure that you analyze situations well, that you're able to interact with your students, and you're able to make them want to follow you. Now those last two are very important because those interpersonal skills that you're going to develop, the biggest thing I've seen teachers fail with is being socially awkward in the classroom. That's something that you need to learn how to overcome. And you need to put your foot down and become that leader in your classroom by behavior management and by firm established procedures. That second thing is being educable. Now this is your intellectual curiosity and the willingness to give and receive feedback. This willingness to give and reflect and receive feedback that's sort of the reflection piece of TFA. I'm sure you've noticed that you've done a lot of it already, but you're going to do a lot more of it because, to be honest, reflection is the only way we really get better in that classroom. Now, Natalie is going to be your CM, so you're going to want to communicate with her and be open. And don't shut people out if you feel like you're the one who can do it yourself in the classroom because, guaranteed, the best advice that you can get is by simply talking to someone and realizing that you had the answer all along, you just needed someone to talk to you about it. The third thing is the commitment. And this really goes to the longevity of yourself in the classroom. You need to have a commitment to your students, to the movement and its values, and to your own personal goals and development. If you don't have that commitment to the students or the movement, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to come day to day to day into school if you're not a absolute success every day and you're not going to become a success overnight that takes time now the last point uh, you're going to need to get that commitment to your own personal goals after about the first semester second semester you're going to want to start focusing on yourself and how does your teaching teaching in the classroom help you later on with your own personal goals, be it teaching, business, or something else. Make sure that you make it a priority within your classroom. This is very important because it lets you become very passionate about what you're doing while still feeling like you're contributing something to your own professional growth. Uh, so those are three things that I thought were very important for Institute. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to ask Natalie about my contact information and I'll be welcome to reach out. If you're teaching math in a secondary institution, just contact me and I'll try to set up anything to help you out with some resources. That's one thing that I make sure I have a lot of. Have a great day and good luck seeing your kids.